have here is, uh, this is uh, Mr. Forrest Gump. This is our client. Now, he has a striking resemblance to Tom Hanks, a famous Hollywood star, but that's not him. This is actually our client, Mr. Forrest Gump. He has uh, reached out to our five-day intensive EMDR clinic. You all are going to be helping with this case. So he is seeking treatment. Um, he is seeking treatment for a number of things. Uh, number one, he recently lost the love of his life, uh, Jenny, who is pictured up here. She had a mysterious illness, and she passed away. They're from Greenville, Alabama. He is a widower. This is him and Jenny's son. So it's just him and his son now. Uh, Forrest is a white male about age 35 in good health, um, but he's having a lot of issues around grief. His wife died about six months ago, um, and they hadn't been married long, but that's their son. And Forrest also was in the military. He is a veteran of the Vietnam War. He was in the Army and served and was honorably discharged, even won a Congressional Medal of Honor for saving colleagues, uh, including this gentleman, Mr. De uh, Lieutenant Dan. Um, and this over here is Forrest's good friend, Bubba Gump. And uh, not Gump, but Bubba, that's his good friend. And Bubba actually died in Vietnam. And that's also been bothering Forrest. He's having some flashbacks and nightmares, thinking about things that he saw in Vietnam and just in the military. So he's got grief and loss issues. He's got some issues around almost like PTSD-like stuff. He's also dealing with, a couple years ago, previous to that, he lost his mom, who was his number one supporter. She uh, really loved him, and he was born with some um, health challenges with this one of his spine and some things happening to his leg. But mom encouraged him, and um, it was just the two of them. No father in the picture, mom raised him, she had a boarding house. They did pretty well, he graduated from high school, went into the military. And then after the war, uh, Mr. Gump went into, he had a, um, a business, um, he had an honor of his friend Bubba, they were supposed to be shrimp and go captains. And so he went into business and they have the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, I don't know if you all have heard of them, they are pretty popular around. So that is his company. So financially he's done well, he's raising his son, that's all well, but he is having a lot of issues uh, around grief and loss. And I believe you may have seen one of my Facebook posts on LinkedIn, I mean my posts on LinkedIn or Facebook about EMDR, and so he, he reached out to our clinic. Um, so we're gonna be helping Mr. Gump, okay? That is the assignment. So you all are gonna kind of walk us through what might we do to help Mr. Gump. Are you ready? All right, so he's coming in. Um, what kind of first thing to do? Again, there's no right answer, wrong answer. We're just gonna kind of figure this out. What do we need to do first? Say hello. Say hello, that would be important. Yeah. Biopsychosocial. We're gonna do our We're gonna say hello. So we're gonna work on that therapeutic relationship. We're gonna do our, it's almost good. That we do our biopsychosocial. And when we do our biopsychosocial, what do we do when we do biopsychosocial? What do you all include in your biopsychosocial? History, like um, diagnoses or like substance use issues, okay. medical, medical substance, family history, family. So you're going to know all about if there's any family issues and kind of some of the things we went through, but kind of going deeper. You may even do genogramming or something like that to get to know them better. Uh, trauma maybe history. Trauma history. You're gonna do maybe some of your assessments that you all, what kind of assessments do you all use? Yes, PhD. ACEs. Get in that dissociation assessment. Uh, 
screen to kind of see what we're looking at. And we'll talk more about that today in the coming days. So we'll kind of get a better idea of what that looks like as well. Um, perhaps we might be even introducing EMBR, talking a little bit about it. And let's say he's agreed, he's interested in doing it. Uh, so we've done all that, that that's always good. We're, we're coming back. And maybe let's say diagnosis, we're looking at maybe some, um, I don't know, what would you say? What would diagnosis, let's see, what would you all say? What diagnosis do you think? PTSD, okay. Anything else? Who? Yeah, intellectual disability, okay. And then um, the thing about that grief and loss piece. Adjustment disorder, okay. Adjustment disorder. Maybe even major depressive, you're thinking? Maybe, okay. Maybe that's a rule out, okay. Anything else on diagnostic? Good there, okay. Moving on, uh, where do we go next? Phase one we've got, what's next? Preparation. Preparation, we're going into phase two. Well, now what do we need to do? Yeah, make sure he can ground suits, contain. What type of, how are we gonna know that? What are we doing, what type of affect management, what type of skills are we gonna do, what type of? We're gonna teach um, Okay, what kind of stuff are we gonna do? Um, Secure your space, secure your space, whatever. Five, four, three, two, one. Container. Acupuncture. Acupressure, okay. What else? Breathing. What about that peaceful place? Peaceful place. And then there might be even some other things that you all do that you might want to throw in if, if you're thinking that might be helpful. We'll talk about resourcing figures later today as well. Today or tomorrow, we'll talk about resourcing figures, which is from the work of Laura Cornell and her book that, uh, the book that somebody holds a hammer. Yeah. Tapping in, she talks about resourcing figures. And the thing I love about the resourcing figures, this is where we get to bring in the clients. Like, uh, for instance, I used to work at a Catholic hospital. so. For a lot of people who are Catholic, like the saints, Mary came in a lot. So this is usually we're not picking maybe somebody that's in their family or their spouse. This is somebody that's usually outside of the family. Uh, so like resources that can stand the test of time. Maybe like a counselor or somebody, a teacher that used to be in their life or a teacher, but somebody that nothing bad ever happened or would ever happen, but people that we could bring in as resource figures internally to help them. It could be somebody from a book, movie, or TV show. It can also be um, like someone who has passed on, like a nana or something like that, but it just has to be somebody. Um, like if we're, like I, for instance, my, my grandmother died two years ago. But when I think about her, I don't think about the breast cancer and her dying, I think about her hug, playing the piano. So it's positive. So it has to be somebody like that or like a pet. Like I love sports. You all know how I love Squirt. Uh, we talked about Squirt, his little, little, little miniature horse. So they can pick animals. I had this little girl, all her sand trays had all animals. She didn't like have people in them. So if they like animals, they can use animals. Yeah. No. We had someone um, where there was a history of sexual abuse in childhood and they were an adult and the clinician was having some issues trying to get things going. So she did some resourcing. She did this activity I was like, what the heck, I'll do it. Well, what came up was that um, he liked to watch those shows, SUV, CSI, which kind of makes sense because of history, right? So all his figures were like figures from those shows. And at the end, he said, um, what's her name? Detective Olivia. Olivia Benson would have never let this happen to me. <laughs> How powerful is that? So this is where the client gets to bring in all their good stuff. So this is something I like to do in that phase two preparation. So for me, Jesus is my protective figure. But for a lot of my Catholic clients, it was Mary and saints, like different, they got saints for everything. I don't know if y'all know this, like for buying a house, they got saints for everything. So a lot of saints shows up, uh, but it doesn't have to be religious. It can be whatever it is for them, okay? 
my um, nurturing figure, Claire Huxtable, because I grew up on the Cosby Show. I had a gentleman who was in his 60s, older white gentleman. He liked uh, Brady Bunch Mom. He grew up on it, right? They have a connection. There was something there, right? My nurture, my um, wise figure is Maya Angelou. We have the same history of Arkansas and a bunch of other stuff. I've never met her. She has passed on. She's very much a part of my system. And my courageous figure is Oprah Winfrey. That's what it is for me. But for your clients, you work with them to develop this, and then those figures, you can bring that into like processing and supporting them throughout this entire EMDR process. So anyway, that's that. Let's move ahead. Phase, so we've got that done. Let's say everything's good here. We know they can ground, soothe, contain, they got that. Where are we headed next? Target sequence planning. So we gotta do our target sequence plan. What do we do with target sequence plan? What do we do? What's the positive? So we gotta look at kind of probably being more specific kind of about as far as where we wanna go. Cause he's got a lot of different things going on, right? Well, let's say the primary, the biggest one was the loss of Jenny. And maybe, what do you think? What might be, what might be it? As you think about grief and loss, what might be some negative cognitions that you think might come up with that? Grief and loss of a spouse. You might feel responsible. Maybe some responsibility. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So maybe like feeling responsible for everything and maybe uh, did the best you could or recognize what you can and can't control and then maybe that also comes in because he's got some other losses. He lost his good friend uh, Bubba in the war. Uh, Lieutenant Dan lost a leg, he helped bring him out. Mama passed away, right? And there may be some other things that he feels responsible for too. And maybe even for the future, he's maybe he's worried something might happen to it. So remember how we talked about that and wrote in the subject? I might even ask that. Do you have any concerns about your son? It seems like you've lost a lot of people. I'm just wondering, do you have any concerns about maybe something happened to them? You can say yes or no. But I'm probably gonna definitely throw that out there, especially because he's lost like pretty much everybody that's close to him. But let's say we got that done. Our target sequence plan is done. Good to go. Where are we headed next? Phase two, phase, phase two, phase two, process. Phase two. All right. So now we're getting into that preparation. We're going to do that informed consent, and we've already been getting consent throughout, but we're going to be talking about that. And then we're going into our phase three assessment, kind of getting targets. Maybe the incident we're going to be working on is um, the day that she passed away, or maybe the day when she came and told him, "Hey, I'm dying." Right? Whatever we want to do, we're going to set that phase three up, and then we're going into desensitization. We can do standard, contained, restricted, fragmented, EMD. Um, but let's say we open it up and we did standard because he's kind of, he's got the, you know, sounds like he's in good shape. How do we know? How do we know which one we want to do? How might we know? What might be some indications that standard is going to be a good option for him? Yeah, he's got the willingness to do it. His ability to regulate, he's kind of been able to affect, manage, he's got some good regulation. There's stability also in his life, he's got that. Um, so he's ready, willing, and able to, to process his entire neural network. Let's say that all goes well. We go through our installation, that goes well. Sun's down, VOC is up, body scan is clear. We're going into closure, close them out. Come back a week later, where do we go next? Stage three. Stage three, reevaluation. What do we do a reevalu? What'd you say? Check if anything's changed. Check if anything's changed, maybe if there was any dreams, any challenges. And then what else do we have to check? There's one, one, one other thing that's going to be really important. So, yes, we're going to go back in and reevaluate our previous target that we did the week before. This is really important. And let's say the Suns is still at a zero. Suns is still at a zero, VOC is up. Then we're gonna take a look, another look at that target sequence plan and kind of make a decision. Let's see, maybe maybe all of them, when we did that, it cleared everything out. Probably not, but maybe it did, we'll see. And we make decisions about are we doing more targets 
or do we need to do, maybe this is also where I'm gonna bring in some additional work around grief and loss. Maybe we're gonna talk about the stages of grief or supports and different things around grief or even PTSD. I don't know, it depends on what his needs are, what he's interested in. But just checking in, uh, does this all make sense? Is this kind of coming together? Does this, you found this helpful? Does this kind of make it, okay? But yeah, this is